Section 3.4 is equivalent statements. In this section, we're going to determine if two statements are equivalent. We will use De Morgan's laws of logic, and we will also deal with conditional statements as disjunctions, and we'll start negating conditional statements. <clears throat> equivalent statements. Equivalent statements are um, two statements are equivalent. Um, and this is symbolized by either using a double-sided, double bar, double-sided arrow, or you can just use three bars in a row. If both statements have exactly the same truth value in the answer column of a truth table, so the easiest way to prove whether two statements are equivalent or not is to do a truth table. If the answer columns are not identical, then the statements are not considered to be equivalent. Sometimes, instead of using the word equivalent, they'll talk about something being logically equivalent. Just know that that means the same thing. Let's look at an example so I can show you how you can tell whether two statements are equivalent to each other or not. So determine whether the two statements are equivalent. Your first is P and, and then you have parentheses, Q or R. Your second is, in parentheses, P and Q, or in parentheses, P and R. So what we'll do is we'll do a truth table for each of the scenarios and we'll see if they look identical. If they do, then we have equivalent statements. Okay, so we're gonna need two truth tables. So let's first deal with the P and Q or R. So since there's three statements, we're going to need to do a P, Q, and R column. And remember, when you have three statements, there will be eight possibilities. You're going to first need to figure out what um, Q or R is. And then once you know that, you can do P and Q or R. And that will be your first answer column. Okay, so for your eight possibilities for the P's, you'll start with four trues and four falses. For the Q's, you'll do two true, two false, two true, two false. And for the R's, you'll go every other true, false, true, false, true, false, true, false. Now, we need to figure out the right side of the statement first, the Q or R, because it's in parentheses. And remember, for an OR statement, as long as one of the items is true, then we would consider them both to be true. So if we look at the Q, R, we have true, 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 false, false, true, false, false. It's the only time you're going to get a false in an OR statement. True, true. True, false, false, true, and false, false. That'll cause a false. Then we need to do P and the column that we just did. Okay, so we need to look at the P column, and we need to look at the Q or R column, and we need to do a conjunction. So remember, the only time this is true is if they are both true. So we have a true, true. True, 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 false. Okay, that'll cause a false. False, 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 the rest of the way down. Okay, so if you look at your first um, statement, the answer column is three trues and five falses. So in order for the um, other statement to be equivalent to it, it also needs to have three trues and five falses. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scoot this one over a little bit, and I'm just going to look at the answer column there because that's all I really need. I need to create a second um, truth table for the second statement. Now the second statement also uses P, Q, and R. The left-hand side asks us to find P and Q. 
The right hand side asks us to find P and R. And then for the final version, we need to do the disjunction of those. So we'll need to take P and Q or P and R. So if we start our truth table, we can begin it the same way. There's three statements, so we'll need eight possibilities. So under the P, you'll put four trues, followed by four falses. Under the Q, two true, two false, two true, two false. And under the R, you do every other one. True, false, true, false, true, false, true, false. Now, for the first column, we need P and Q. So remember, they both have to be true in order for that. So we're going to get true, true, false, 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 false. Then we need to figure out P and R. So for P and R, we also need them to both be true. So we'll have a true, false, true, false, 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 false. Then for the disjunction, we need to bring the two starred columns together. So for a disjunction, only one of them has to be true. So we'll have a true, true, true. If you notice the rest of the way down, everything's false. So all you have to do is compare those two columns um, to each other. So if you look at um, the column of the second statement, we have three trues and five falses. And if you look at the column from our first statement, we have three trues and five falses. So we would be able to say that these two statements are equivalent to each other. So usually what they'll do is they'll write the two statements down. And then between them, they'll use one of the equivalency statements. The one I'm most familiar with is the triple bar, so that's typically what I use. I notice this textbook likes the double bar arrowed statement. Either one's the same. All you're doing is stating that these two items are equivalent. So sometimes, rather than giving you the item in terms of a statement, or in terms of letters, they'll give you the items in terms of sentences. So this problem says, determine which statement is logically equivalent to, it is not true that the tire is both out of balance and flat. Okay, so the first thing you're going to have to do is you're going to have to translate that into symbols. And then you'll have to translate each of the options below into symbols. You'll have to make a truth table for each one of the options to see which items are equivalent. So let's first um, translate, it is not true that. Okay, it is not true that is a, a negation of a compound statement. So we'll put the negation out front, and then we'll need to put our parentheses for our compound statement. It is not true that the tire is both out of balance. So we'll have the tire out of balance as P and flat. We'll have the tire being flat as Q. This is an AND statement, so we'll use the conjunction symbol. Okay, now we'll have to go through and translate each of the other phrases um, into their symbols. And then we'll go through and see which ones are equivalent. Okay, um, first, if the tire is not flat, then the tire is out of balance. Okay, so this is an if-then statement. In an if-then statement, that's the one that uses the little arrow. Uh, we want a not-flat tire, so we'll need the negation 
The tire being flat was Q, so not Q. Um, then the tire is not out of balance, so we need a not out of balance. So negation P, that's option A. Option B, the tire is not out of balance, so not P, or the tire is not flat, not Q. That's option B. Option C, the tire is not flat, so not Q, and the tire is not out of balance, so not P. And then option D, if the tire, so we have an if then, if the tire is not out of balance, not P, then the tire is not flat, not Q. So basically, which ones are trying to say the same thing that we said in the original statement? So first thing we're going to do is we're going to make a t-table for the original statement. Let's scoot everything over a little bit so we have some room. Okay. So our original statement was um, we had a P, we had a Q, we have a P and Q, and then we have the negation of P and Q. So let's make a t-table for that. There's only two options, so there's only two statements, so there's only four ways you can combine that. They can either be true true, or true false, or false true, or false false. When you do a conjunction, they have to both be true in order for the statement to be true. And when you do the negation, you're going to end up with a false. True, true, true. Okay, so this is what we're looking for. We're looking for a false, true, true, true. So we're going to go through and do a t-table for each one and see which one creates that. Okay, so for statement A, we need a P. We need a P and a Q. For B, we need a P and a Q. And for C, PQ. And for D, PQ. So you can start all those the same. I'm not going to do all four, but I'll do one or two of them for you so that you can see. Okay, so for statement A, we first need the negation of Q, and then we need the negation of P, and then we're going to have to do the conditional, not Q, if not Q, then not P. Okay, so not Q is going to be false, true, false, true. Not P is false, false, true, true. And then remember, on the if-then statement, the only time that the statement is false is if you start with a true and you finish with a false. So a false, if false, then false, will be true. If true, then false is the only time that you get a false. If false, then true is true. If true, then true is true. So then you need to look at the answer column and see if they are equivalent to each other. And they are not. So this would not be an equivalent statement. And then you'd repeat for the other three items to see which are and which are not equivalent. Um, I can tell you which ones will be equivalent. In this one, the not P or not Q will end up being an equivalent statement. 
and none of the others will end up working. Okay. There are um, what's called De Morgan's Law. De Morgan's uh, is a is is a famous famous mathematician, and he found two statements that are always logically equivalent to each other. You can go through and prove it using a truth table if you want. You are not required to. You can just memorize them. So if you ever have an if not that statement, and then afterwards it is a conjunction, so if not that, P and Q, you can change it to be not P or not Q. These will end up being equivalent statements to each other, and that's De Morgan's first law. De Morgan's second law is the same thing, except the conjunctions and dejunction, disjunctions switch. So if not that, P or Q is equivalent to not P and not Q. So I would just jot those in your notebook and be ready to use them. It can save you time later on down the road um, so that you can skip making a truth table if you recognize something is De Morgan's Law. Okay, so using De Morgan's Law, um, let's try to write an equivalent statement. Okay, so we have write an equivalent, equivalent statement that is logically equivalent to it is not true that tomatoes are poisonous or eating peppers cures the common cold. Okay, so if you wanted to translate the sentence you were reading, you have the it is not true that statement. Okay, so you could turn that into a disjunction with a set of parentheses. As soon as you hear that it is not true that, you, I would start that way. Okay, now what is it not true that? It is not true that tomatoes are poisonous. Okay, so let's let tomatoes be poisonous be statement P. Then they use the word or, so that's your disjunction. Eating peppers cures a cold. So eating peppers curing a cold would be Q. Okay, well we just learned De Morgan's law that said what you need to do to be equivalent to this is negate the P and negate the Q. And if you do that, those will be equivalent statements. So if we make the translation, remember the negation means not. Okay, so we have, um, it is, we have that tomatoes are not poisonous. And then remember the conjunction is an and. Peppers do not cure a cold. So you just used De Morgan's first law. You didn't have to use a t-table because it is, has been proven that these are equivalent statements. Um, sometimes you have um, to do an equivalent statement for a conditional statement. So a common way to change it, let's say you have the statement if P then Q, you could change that to a disjunction um, by saying not P or Q. These would be equivalent to each other and you can go back and forth. So in general, to change a conditional statement into an or or disjunction, you have to negate the antecedent, which is the item in front of the arrow, and then you change the conditional statement to a disjunction, you keep the consequent the same. Okay, so let's look at this. Um, write a conditional statement that is logically equivalent to the cows are in the pasture or the horses are not in the barn. Okay, so let's first translate the example that we're looking for. Uh, the cows are in the pasture, let's let that be P, or is your disjunction, the horses are not in the barn. That would be the negation, and we'll have Q be that the horses are in the barn. Okay, so they want you to take this phrase and write an equivalent statement that is using a conditional statement. So remember, conditional is your arrow. 
So to go back and forth, we're using the rule we just learned, but we're going the opposite direction. So when you do that, remember that the disjunction turns into the conditional. The antecedent gets negated. The consequence stays the same. Okay, so that's just using the rule we previously studied. Now you want to write that in terms of the cows in the barn. Okay, so remember P was the cows are in the pasture, so not P. If the cows are not in the pasture, then, and now you have your not Q, the horses... are not in the barn. And you have just changed a disjunction into a conditional statement. Okay, um, the negation of a conditional statement can also be written as a conjunction. So notice if you have a conditional statement in a set of parentheses with a negation symbol out front, you can write that as a conjunction, which is an and statement. So when you do this, the antecedent will not be negated. The conditional statement will now be an and or a conjunction. And the consequent will be negated. So for example, we could go do an equivalent statement. Write a statement that is equivalent to, it is false that if you hang the picture, then it will be crooked. So notice they've started you with an if-then statement. Okay, so it is false would be your negation, and then anything that comes after it, the negation is applying to. It is false that if you hang the picture, <laughs> hold on, it is false, we have our negation, that if you hang the picture, so we have an if-then statement, hanging the picture will be statement P, then it will be crooked. Being crooked will be statement Q. So if we want to do an equivalent statement, then we can do this with a conjunction. We do not put the negation on the P, we do put the negation on the Q. And then if you do that in the terms of the picture, P stood for you hang, you hang the picture, this is your and, and this is not crooked. Okay, so if um, I was going to say that, I would say you hang the picture and it will not be crooked. Okay, so there's other variations of conditional statements that you can have. They are all going to be equivalent to a conditional statement. So remember, conditional statements are if P, then Q. Um, the variations are called the converse, the inverse, and the contrapositive. Okay, so all three of those will be equivalent to if P, then Q. So this is just an overview of what they are. The conditional statement is if P, then Q. Now, the converse of this, in the converse, all you do is switch the antecedent and the consequent. In the converse, it is if Q, then P. So if P, then Q is equivalent to if Q, then P. The inverse, you do not change the order of the P and the Q, but you negate both the P and the Q. So that becomes if not P, then not Q. That is also equivalent to if P, then Q. The contrapositive does both. You change the order of the P and the Q, and you negate the P and the Q. So it will read if not Q, then not P. So again, all three of these are equivalent to if P then Q. So sometimes it's helpful to change the way something reads. Um, it could sometimes make your truth table not quite as complicated.
Okay, so let's look at an example. So for the conditional statement, if the painting is by Andy Warhol, apparently popular today. Okay, so for the conditional statement, if the painting is by Andy Warhol, then the painting is valuable. So we want to write the, the converse, the inverse, and the contrapositive. So we'll first translate um, all three into symbols. So remember the conditional is if the painting is by Andy Warhol, then the painting is valuable. So P would be Andy Warhol and Q would be valuable. So remember your converse, all that happens in the converse is the P and the Q switch positions. If Q then P. So you would read that as if the painting is valuable, then it is by Andy Warhol. And that would be um, the converse. The inverse, the P and the Q stay in the same order they were in, but they are both negated. So in this sentence, it would say, if the painting is not by Andy Warhol, then the painting is not valuable. The contrapositive does both. The P and the Q switch orders, and they are both negated. Okay, so if the painting is not valuable, then the painting is not by Andy Warhol.